is definitely a star on the rise on the national scene and is coming off winning the Interstate Racing Association Championship in the Upper Midwest. We're going to be talking to Lubbock, Texas youngster Brenham Crouch about his start in sprint cars, where he came from before sprint cars, and what his plans are moving forward, including an interesting trip this winter to New Zealand for the first time. That's coming up next on the Dave's Home Supply Getting Up to Speed podcast after these messages. Dave's Home Supply specializes in cabinets, flooring, and countertops. Visit their website at daveshomesupply.com to look at products, services, financing, and even a free estimate. Are you looking for bookkeeping, payroll, or income tax services? Then check out the folks at For You Simple Bookkeeping. They are a licensed tax preparer throughout the entire United States. For more information, click on the link in the description. Boys, the rising star from the Lone Star State, representing Lubbock, Texas, driving car number one and the newly minted Interstate Racing Association champion in 410 action, Brenham Crouch. And Brenham, it's great to have you on the program. Hi, oh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having me. Hopefully we can uh, we can have a good time and, and discuss some super cool stuff. No doubt. Any time talking about racing is, is always a good time, I say. so. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, I feel like it's an easy topic to... Uh, you know, just to, like I said, discuss, and um, you can always uh, <clears throat> always venture off into different. Uh, I guess I can't find the word I'm looking for here, but um, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, I guess it's, it's a big umbrella. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. There's a whole bunch of topics that can lead into and rabbit trail into some in- interesting conversations. Um, so- something that I really find really cool about you is you're a kid from west texas but you have raced so many different places so many different things as well obviously we'll be talking a lot about that today um the interstate racing association winning that championship that has got to feel first of all amazing and and a super huge feat for you in your young career yeah no i uh i feel like our entire team you know, kind of exceed everybody's expectations for the year. Like we, this year was meant to be more for, for learning than anything and just uh, building our team's chemistry and confidence and everything like that. Um, and, you know, as soon as, as soon as Austin came on board, we, you know, we, we had, uh, you know, decent speed right out of the bat. And at that point it was just up to, uh, you know, fine tuning and obviously me learning. I didn't have really a whole lot of winning experience going into this year. So, uh, but Austin was really good at, uh, you know, help me communicate and you know just just learning like i said the fine stuff in the sport to that it makes a difference within you know tenth of a second well and in the interstate racing association primarily based in wisconsin but it doesn't race solely in wisconsin it goes to a different a lot of different places 34 raceway in west burlington iowa you guys had had a, a co-sanctioned deal with the Northern Outlaw Sprint Association. NOSA went to River City Speedway in Grand Forks. There's a lot of territory that's covered and uh, co-sanctioned stuff with you know NOSA and occasionally with the All Stars. Um, and you guys go to some really cool places. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, you know, like you mentioned, we went up there with NOSA and hung out at River Cities and a couple of those places. And in my opinion. River City is my favorite racetrack that we went to all year long. It's, uh, you know, it produced really good racing and you had to make, you know, it was, it was quick. You had to make your decisions. Um, I'd say a lap or two in advance, which is really cool to me, but, uh, no, just real hard racing, you know, across the year. Like you said, there's a variety of racetracks that, which makes IRA, you know, even better than, you know, I guess more better than a lot of regional series across the country. Um, they just do a really good job at, uh, you know, even even taking care of their guys. The officials are awesome. The the fans, the drivers, everybody affiliated with them. Uh, just just really cool to be around and, um, you know, have a really good year. Well, and something, River Cities is a track I've always loved because I'm, you know, from the West Coast, so there's, you know, tight high bank bull rings, and that place really reminds me of some of the places around here except there. Man, if you go off the top, it, it's kind of unforgiving, and it happens a lot, and even to some of the best drivers that run there. Yeah, I guess 
when we first saw the place, you know, that was my initial thought, you know, Hey, this place is really banked and there's nothing really to save you. Uh, it's not really that forgiving. And you almost have to just clear that from your mind. And, uh, you know, you like qualifying both nights is right around the top. Heat race both nights are right around the top. And, um, you know, second half of both features are right around the top. So that kind of has to leave your mindset. And, uh, you know, you, you really just think about doing your job and performing, I guess, but, no, I, I definitely agree. You know, you saw Dob Meyer, um, I think, get upside down at the outlaw race. And that Obviously, that was a big jump off the top of three. So, uh, you know, thankful. thankfully, their safety crew and everybody there um, does a really good job. And, you know, I'm not really too worried about it. But no, I, I, I completely agree. I guarantee that does not feel very good. <laughs> Sure, sure. And, you know, you mentioned all the great tracks and the great fans and it, it, you know, it would be, um, it would be a miss justice to not mention the great drivers that are part of the IRA. Obviously Bill Baylog, um, has been the man with that group for, for several years, but you know, Scotty Thiel, Scotty Neitzel, um, and, and some other guys that are, that are pretty good with, you know, Danny Schlafer and, uh, Blake Nemi. Um, some of those guys that, that are super competitive and, and um, you know, and tough to beat. Yeah, for sure. Uh, like I said, I think everybody there is really consistent, and it was amazing racing with those guys while I was learning how to, you know, use a wing and worry about air and, you know, just essentially dice it up with those guys, and they were really good at uh, racing me clean, but obviously not cutting me any slack. So, um, you know, a huge thanks goes out to my competition I had this year. Uh, you know, they didn't make it easy, but, you know, guys like Bill or, uh, you know, Scotty Thiel and, and Jordan Goldsberry, those guys, um, you know, they, they always kept me honest and, you know, I, I really appreciate that. Well, and then you guys, you know, flirted with the All-Stars a lot this year. They came and uh, had a couple of trips in that neck of the woods. And also, you know, Ian Madsen towards the end of the year coming. And then um, this is something to note, a little bit of a segue to how the year went. Greg Wilson, you know, multi-time all-star champion, former regular with the World of Outlaws, and Plymouth Dirt Track on July 28th. You're just having a sensational race. You're running up front, and he beats you, like, by, I don't know, less than a foot or something at Plymouth. But then lightning strikes the next night at Wilmot and you're able to finally capture that first IRA win, which had to feel super special. Yeah. Like you said, that, uh, that Plymouth race is one I'm never going to forget. You know, it's probably the most, one of the most fun races I had all year. Just, uh, really dicey. That place is super fun. Uh, always produces really good racing. You know, we led the majority of it. We got by, you know, Joel Myers Jr. And uh, a couple other guys early after, you know, like I said, racing, really good hard and um we had a late race restart which actually saved me um i gave me another chance after me and bill got to racing and you know just greg poked his nose underneath me after the white flag dropped and uh, at that point i knew you know i he was a little bit better than me and i just kind of went to the bottom i know what i had i hadn't been down there all race and uh you know like you said he beat me by probably half a nose wing but sure. um yeah, no, it almost lit a fire underneath me and, and the team, and we were able to, you know, we started deep the next night at Wilmot. Uh, Bill ended up going around, but we just got by Scotty, and that, that was the, you know, the, the changing factor or the deciding factor of, you know, winning that race. I think if we wouldn't have pulled the trigger, you know, that lap, um, you know, we probably would have ran second to Scotty. So I'm glad we could get that for the team and my dad and all my sponsors and, you know, high playing building division, Carby, carbon safe and technology sharp advantage everybody that helps out march and cattle co just uh just happy to you know even wrap up this, this series with the uh, championship for those guys 10 10 podiums over the year 20 top fives 26 top tens and 42 starts and primarily ran 410 wing sprint cars obviously a majority with the ira went to knoxville saw you there and your buddy joel myers jr was uh, helping spin the spanners but also ran a little bit of some 360 stuff and also midget stuff on dirt and at pavement and actually most recently at Brownsburg's uh, Lucas Oil Indianapolis Raceway Park. Yeah, that was that was uh, probably, you know, going into the asphalt stuff, I, I didn't know how much I was going to enjoy it. You know, everybody that goes from dirt to asphalt kind of has their own opinion about it. But um, once I started making laps around that, you know, that massive racetrack, um, 
it's actually really racy and I had a really good time thanks to, you know, Jeff West and ITC and everybody over there. So I think we ended up ended up third on uh, on paper. So big jump from the race we had in May. I think we ended up ninth. So I'm you know, I'm happy with the progress and really and truly I do that just to, to have a good time with some friends. Yeah, and I was gonna say, yeah, you went there for the Carb Night Classic, I think, uh during the weekend of the Indianapolis five hundred. Yeah, yeah, that was a super cool experience. We got to race with, uh, you know, some upper end guys, and uh, you know, it's just super cool to learn from those guys. And is that something like down the pipeline you'd like to do more? Or are you just comfortable with doing it, like kind of every now and then, just making brief cameos? Yeah, you know, obviously, kind of our priority right now is to race wing dirt stuff, and you know, just just get consistent in that. And uh, you know, but no, I I really do enjoy it, and I'd like to do it more you know just obviously depends on how much my schedule allows that but hopefully next year we'll get to run at least you know the same two races and uh hopefully a couple more heading forward so just out of curiosity you mentioned the word schedule you know you race on the weekend in wisconsin or in the upper midwest and then do you travel back home and just leave your stuff uh, wherever you guys are going to kind of re- or have a home base uh, somewhere up there in Wisconsin, or, or how do how do the logistics work there? Yeah, so we have a we have a shop and a house in Brownsburg now that we're leasing, and um, we we keep all our stuff there. Actually, we're based out of there. Um, you know, now yeah, no, we we uh, we'll just kind of run out of there, and hopefully, the majority of the time we end up back there for for the week, and then you know, say Thursday, Friday, we'll we'll head back out to you know wherever. We're heading next. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say, whole, holy Toledo. Uh, obviously, not going from Wisconsin to Texas back and forth. That would, that would um, probably make your life a little crazy. Yeah, that kind of ended after the micro days. We started getting, you know, to Missouri and Kansas, and Nebraska, and uh, you know, that was, was kind of as far as the guys wanted to go. So, sure, we uh, migrated up to Indy. So tell me how you kind of got your start in racing. And obviously it sounds like starting in the micro sprint ranks. Yeah. So, uh, my dad used to race Salmon sprint cars in, uh, you know, the South, Southwest area. And, uh, as soon as I got old enough to race, uh, he got me a go-kart. We raced that for several years and, you know, moved up the ranks in that world. And then, um, you know, we really didn't get a whole lot of outlaw cart stuff, but as far as, you know, clone motor stuff, we, we ran a lot of races and moved up to the micro ranks and, you know, ran two or three years in that. And then, uh, you know, we, we hooked up with Keith Coons to run a few years with him and picked up a power Act championship, uh, which was that, you know, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. It was, it was a blast to work with Keith and Pete and everybody over there at KKM. And, you know, after that, we just, we want to go wing racing and, you know, we, we had the stuff to do it. Thanks to my dad and grandpa. So, um, that's kind of what we did this year. We wanted to see what we had, and obviously we, we exceeded our own expectations, so couldn't really be happier. Well, and KKM just seems to just produce, um, like they get talented drivers, and it just seems to magnify that talent. I, and I just don't know what it is, and perhaps you do. Like you get into that stable, and it just turns star after star after star, it seems like. Yeah, I would say um, a lot of it would come, to me at least, uh, you know, just get competitive with your teammates. You know, you almost you race them harder than anybody else for whatever reason. It just drives you to do better. Um, and, you know, like you said, you got Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, Rico, you know, Thorson, everybody, CV, everybody that uh, has come out of there in the earlier years. And then you have guys like, you know, Buddy and, I mean, if you want to consider myself, uh, Jason. Everybody that's uh, that's you know moved on to bigger, better things. It's always seemed to come from from that camp, and you know they're just really good at, at working with you and teaching you how to communicate and just you know race and dice it up in general. I started really young, and I would say that I just grasped the midget deal as I was getting out, but I felt like I had learned what I needed to learn to, to move forward. So you ran you ran the midgets, you get all that experience, and then what kind of drew you to wing sprint cars? Was that just feel like the next natural step, or was there was um, was there interest of people approaching you like, hey, you should really try this? Um, so 
you know, we were in the micro stuff. I, I would always consider myself like, you know, a wing guy. So mm-hmm. I think the wing sprint car stuff was always our end goal. Um, but, you know, we, we got the opportunity to teach and we wanted to try it out and see where it led, you know, with being affiliated with Toyota, you know, we didn't really know, uh, you know, what we had in store. We wanted to see where we, we ranked and, uh, you know, obviously ended up coming back to the wing stuff, just, uh, kind of, you know, it's what I wanted to do. It's been a dream of mine, you know, to race with the outlaws and the all stars and now high limit, you know, everything like that has been super cool. And, um, you know, I've enjoyed every moment of it. So just, uh, you know, like, like I said, learning and, you know, getting to where we can p- compete with those guys on a nightly basis is kind of where we're at now, and um, hopefully we can do that within the next year or so. Well, I know that things are just wild and crazy. I don't I don't think you can em- overemphasize how wild and crazy things are. But for 2024, are you guys looking at running with IRA a little bit or just kind of expanding some things and going in a little bit different direction? Yeah, so uh, it's we're not really quite sure on what we want to do yet. We're kind of waiting for schedules to come out, but um, we definitely want to branch out and go hit bigger races for sure. Um, of course, we're gonna we're gonna hit some IRA stuff too. That's just a really good series to uh, you know always jump back to when you know so you have a lot an off weekend or you know you just wanna wanna go race with good people and and really racy race tracks. So um, yeah, we'll. We'll uh, we'll venture out over there, you know, a couple of times next year, hopefully, and when we're not, when we're not racing with, uh, you know, I or sorry, all stars or outlaws, you know, whoever it ends up being. And I mean, are there any, certain tracks that you're really looking forward to that you haven't went to? That's, I mean, you know, anything in Pennsylvania or Ohio, or or are there places that you're really looking forward to maybe going back again that you felt like, man, we were just solid at the at this place. Yeah, so I would say, obviously, we haven't gotten to venture out to PA or Ohio very much. So there's, you know, places like Eldora and Port Royal, Williams Grove, all those places are, you know, um, just just uh, a place everybody wants to go to. You know, it's bucket list racetracks, I guess. And, uh, you know, definitely those for sure next year, ones I want to I wanna hit check off the list, but I, I really enjoy Plymouth and I feel like we roll around there really good. I think, you know, we had, uh, out of the five times we went there, six times we went there, I think we had four podiums. So I feel like our stuff rolls around there really good and I enjoy it. It's always racy, no matter, you know, doesn't matter how the place starts, uh, but at the beginning of the night, it always ends up being racy almost in a different way, I would say. Um, so I, I really look forward to going to there and, River City, like I said, that place is really cool. And I honestly, I enjoyed I-94 um, up in Minnesota. That place is really cool. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's several places that um, I'd like to go back to and hit with IRA or, you know, whoever it may be with. But hopefully we can, we can do so. Well, and I totally forgot something, how foolish of me. We're talking about 2024, but before, before that happens, you've got some races coming up. You and Joel Myers Jr. are going to be traveling to New Zealand for what would be the New Zealand summer. Yeah, we, we plan on going to racing with uh, War of the Wings. And actually, Joel was the one who hooked me up with Kevin Freeman to drive his car over there. So, you know, a shout out to him and a big thank you to him and his dad, um, along with Kevin Freeman and his entire team and the Andersons for, uh, for giving me some hospitality over there. So um, I just uh, appreciate the opportunity. I think it's going to be a blast, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, win some races over there and, and fight for a championship with those guys. And have you had a chance to look at some some footage of the racing there? Because it, it seems like the tracks are definitely different when you compare them to the tracks out here. But maybe with some of your micro experience, you know, being some of them are a little bit smaller, that may play a big factor. Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, like, you know, this, these places seem to be flatter with, uh, you know, almost horse track, um, type race tracks. I think, uh, you know, I obviously excluding the berm, I feel like you could compare maybe the expo to places like that, obviously Mm -hmm. excluding the size, but, um, that's kind of what I have in my mind going over there. I think I would say that's that's something I could take over there with me. Um, but no, I mean, obviously, I've seen a lot of new racetracks this year and kind of just take everything 
uh, with a grain of salt, look at everything face value and um, <clears throat> just uh, attack it, cross that bridge when we get there. You know what I mean? <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. It'll be the first time for you racing in a foreign country, which will be cool. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I think it's going to be a super cool opportunity. And, um, you know, even outside of racing, it's going to be just, you know, that place is beautiful and a lot of great people and food and that kind of stuff. So I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, just from previous conversations with Joel, like you guys seem to be really good friends and sound like really got close with each other when he was out there racing with you guys for a lot this summer. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he stayed with me at our house and, um, you know, we, we pretty much live side by side um, there for, I'd say, about four, three, four months. So we got really close. And um, like you said, Joel's almost like a brother to me now. So, um, you know, I, I do anything for him and I appreciate everything he's done for me. He's, he's taught me a lot as far as race, the race car goes. And I feel like I've, I've tried to do so with him as far as driving goes. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, we'll, we're really tight and I'm glad to, glad i've had the opportunity to work with them no doubt no doubt well um any other i know you mentioned some people and some sponsors but you're more than welcome to mention them again folks that you want to send a shout out to marketing partners that help you and your race team out yeah like i said before just uh, a huge thanks to my grand my dad and grandpa and high plane fueling division carbon safety technologies sharp advantage Morris from cattle co love it record wilson records uh, you know, just everybody that, that makes it possible. I'm super grateful for all the opportunities I've been given. And, uh, you know, I try to make the most of it. Awesome. And uh, for folks that want to follow you along your journey, your schedule or your results, maybe they want to get some apparel. Is there a good website or a good social media page that people can see? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've got at Burnham Crouch on, you know, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Uh, I think I believe my website stapled on all three of those is burnhamcrowds.com there's there's merchandise um and we're working on some really cool stuff for 2024 so just stay tuned for that super cool really looking forward to staying in touch with you and uh your next race is that going to be in new zealand or are you guys going to try and run something in the states before you go over to new zealand so we've got this coming weekend we're going to race for track nationals with uh ascs over in texarkana is a plan as long as the uh, weather stays away, which it, it seems to be clearing up a little bit. So hopefully we can go, uh, go put on a show there and create some great racing with some really good guys. Okay. Well, awesome. We'll definitely be following you with interest and, uh, and we'll definitely be checking in with you, um, possibly before the year starts in 2024 and see how everything treated you in New Zealand. Yeah. Awesome. That'd be really great. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, that is going to do it for this interview. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and hit the like and subscribe button on whatever platform you found this interview at. It really helps us grow the channel, and we greatly appreciate it. In the meantime, we'll be back with more content and interviews in the future. Be sure and have a great evening or a great rest of your day, whatever time you're listening.